Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of uh, Back in the Saddle. This is FireTrain92, and this time we're doing Tekken, um, an online we're tournament, Fingers to Fight, uh, started by Ninth Pixel, a uh, Tekken player. Uh, he does these weekly every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I've done one of these before, but I kind of had to bow out because I was too busy trying to watch Legends Tomorrow, you know. But this week I decided to play. Um, I, I got knocked into losers bracket um, because. Um, I had to go make a run real quick and I came back and I saw I was in losers bracket and I was like well damn so I'm playing against Kate um, Fang uh, Lars player a team that really should give me a lot of problems to be honest I've always had problems with uh, Fang it's one of those characters I've always had kind of issues with that they they play very evasive enough um, so I did this online tournament because I was like, I need to kind of get back into to, to the real competitive mode. Playing ranked matches all day or playing first to fives. I mean, it's, as competitive as that can be, it's nothing like actually being in the moment of a tournament. So this is loser's bracket. I only have one life. Uh, and if I lose this set, you know, it's, that's it. So I'm sort of actually pretty okay, you know. Nice little juggle there off the counter hit. And I got uh, punished by the wake up. Um, a nice punish there on the arc blast. I've noticed um a difference in my playstyle in Tekken. Uh, it really occurred to me when I was playing some rank matches before this to get warmed up. Um, is that I I don't adapt as fast as I probably should. Um, and it hurts me most of the time. Ugh. That's, that's, a, that's a common thread. Oh, yeah. Uh, a common thread during this match. And uh, actually, I'm going to be posting the entire set of tournament matches to this entire month. Uh, just to kind of get you uh, a, a idea of how it's going to go. Well, the next two videos will be Tekken videos. And then we'll, we'll, we'll run back to the Street Fighter V beta before we actually hit the Street Fighter V. And yeah, this is just terrible. <laughs> I was like, this is perfect. But yeah, I have trouble punishing certain moves this entire set, and it's kind of weird because like I usually usually on point punishes in this game, or well, at least ten frame punishes. So I was playing some rank matches, and yeah, now like I was saying, I don't really adapt as probably fast as I should have. Cause right here I'm just getting pieced out, dog. It's like two, two, it's two zip. You know, I'm getting unblockable tackled, wake up. Juggle and stuff like that, it's just horrible. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I honestly could attack Crash there because he had did nothing special. He wasn't back dashing, he wasn't doing no stance move. I just could attack Crash right there, but no, nah, I want the free tag in so I can have rage and come back. Which, honestly, thinking back, I didn't even think about that. I just kind of tagged in raw for whatever reason. So I got Art Blast on my trouble. So, bam, he, he wins the first match. Um, and I sat there, I was talking to my friend uh, on the PS4 party chat at the time. I was sitting there like, well, I just lost that match. <laughs> but then actually talking to him the entire time actually kind of chewed me out, funnily enough, um, by the second match, which we'll be seeing here. That's a weird little glitch. Uh, the little, what the intro is like silent or whatever, for whatever reason. Round one. I love this music. Da, da, da. So we, I start off by being a lot more patient, and look already punished. Nice. One thing I noticed, I, I began to notice that he is that he rolled back every time I ended with a juggle. <laughs> I can never. A lot of Fangway players do that. Like they'll do one fake and then like and then delay the next one to sleep through the whole thing. And like I always like mess up the timing for myself, and I always get hit by it. Anyways, just a little combo. I'm playing a lot better already, I can tell. Um, wow, wake up, whoa, <laughs> wake up, pop kick. Not that it's punishable or anything. That's a really bad drop. But um, not that it was a um, bad thing or whatever. It's just it's not it's not that punishable. But it's just at the same time, it's just like damn, <laughs> no respect. <laughs> So I'm poking a lot better this round. Nice. Side step into Arc Blast. 
That's a large state for sidestep in our blast. Um, Banks back, uh, back turn four is an on counter hit stuns, and a lot of people tend to get hit by that's why I just tend to wait. But I, I had this round. At, the, at this point, it's just, it's, it's just dominating. Surprised I didn't go for the infinite kicks right there, but I guess it was kind of off axis too, so it didn't really matter. Oh, threw me out of my uh, four, four, four. Hmm. Huh. Bad with fines. Hmm. See, I'm playing a lot more patient as you can tell. I mean, yeah, I'm just sitting there blocking. But no, usually when I sit there, um, I'm doing bad. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like really not, I can't think, I can't do anything. I'm just like being pressured. But in this case, I'm really not being pressured. It's like I'm just being patient. If I lost that round, it's like, ah, I wasn't paying attention. Yes. Okay. <laughs> he was really trying to get that wall splat. <laughs> And luckily, I was able to like to block it and counter it every single time. So, one thing I know about the player though, he's a, he went way too hard on the read. I could have punished that really hard, but I didn't. A good a good move to do after uh, a orbital heal or a um or like in Lars or Brian's uh, up four four or any kind of up four four kind of move with the heal orbital heal looking move or whatever. It's best to either throw. Well, no, I won't say throw. It's best to do like a down for one. Um, I usually just throw because a lot of people don't duck after it, so I can. And most of the time, they're not really expecting a throw. It's like, oh well, this is safe, so I can just do whatever. But in actuality, um, down for since they since they either tend to go low or not block at all, um, go for a throw um, or go for a down for one or a quick mid. Any any quick mid that doesn't get crushed by any like thing like Lars is up for three. You're pretty good. So I came back that second round or whatever strong, round one. and we're at the third match, and he starts off with a low parry, I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> Usually low parry, I think that low parry was a, was a mistake though, because um, he's probably pressing like down for one or something, because that was way too hard of a read. And I cannot punish that move to save my life, it was pissing me off. Well, and I didn't punish that either, wow. So nothing was getting punished. The thing with Fang Ways is they tend to read tag outs a lot. Uh, I tend to too because I do uh, Lee's uh, Cossack kicks to, to read raw tags. Um, and, you know, raw tags are pretty easy to read. Uh, excuse me. Whew, all things considered. Like that right there. See? He had no reason to do that though. It's like he had absolutely no reason to do this. He just gated around me because he was just desperate to get. get it wasn't like I was trying to tag out or anything. I keep, I'm kind of keeping my space. I have no idea what you're really trying to do here. Punish? Nope. Mm, it's nice. Dang, that did 76 damage. But that was taking uh, 7. That would have been like half life. And yeah, I tagged out for no reason right there. Thing is, I could have. Like, a lot of Fang Lin players really rely on that move on tag out. And uh, the best way to come back, I think, against a Fae playing, Fae, uh, Fae player in this in Tech and Tag, anyways, is to kind of just like read that shit because there's no point. There's no point in um, kind of stress this over. And I hated this combo killed me because this looks so janky. I was like, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> like, Ugh. So it's one one. It's, it's a bit more evened out. I still think I'm playing stronger than he is though. Um, and that's not being biased towards me. I'm just, I'm just feeling like I'm playing a lot stronger. Not like, uh, unlike that first game. See, I read the tag in right there. Mm, 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 mm. I used to say that combo was impossible to hit. And once I, oh wow, that was a kill right there. But he tags in with the uh, 443 anyways. That's it. But hey, I used to think that combo was impossible. Or something like I just never hit it, and then. It wasn't until, like recently I said, oh, I can do the combo. Yeah, 
can see. He's backing up and not really trying to whiff line, she's backing up. So I'm like, hey, you're gonna do all that, I can do it too. And I break that throw on reaction. My, my throw breaks came back for a smidgen there. And right there, the orbital healed uh, after, I, after he tried to, um... <laughs> wow. Uh, after he, uh, I tried to do like the flamingo cancel or whatever. I hate when people make reads like that. Because I know it's a hard read. Because, uh, unless you're sidestepping or ducking. Or, unless you're sidestepping, you're not really countering that move in my opinion. Um, it's, you're just making a very, very hard read. And I know it's a lot of people tend to, see, there was no point in me doing that. Um, I know a lot of people tend to, like, either duck for some reason, or, like, assuming I'm about to do, like, a low and hop kick when I, uh, every time I go on Flamingo. And I, us I usually test out the reaction first by, uh, going for the low a lot. I, I typically use the low to, uh, I'm talking about deck strikes here. I usually typically use the low to, um, Time to see what the opponent does, really. The lower characters like bake, you really have to see what your opponent knows, and that's the only way to really win. See, like, really, I have no reason to, like, honestly tag out. That was his problem the entire time, or like, was relying on that damn move. And it messed him up. Oh, I didn't punch that again. And it messes him up on so many occasions. I think he tags out right here. Or, no, no, no. He gets caught by the Flamingo throw. Hmm. But yeah, that's uh, Tekken uh, Tag Tournament 2. Uh, my thoughts on my first match. Um, like I said, I was was it punishing stuff I need to be punished, like Arc Blast and um, that one that, that two hit move by Fang. I can't think of the notation, but um, yeah, the match was pretty much uh, in my favor. I feel like the entire time, it's just I just couldn't solidify it completely until that second round and then I kept making like really big mistakes in the second in the third game but I came back it wasn't much of an issue um yeah I've noticed that uh, like I said earlier in the video that um, my adaptational skills are really weak or whatever but then I realized how fast I kind of caught on and was just like okay yeah I know what I need to do and and I did it for the most part um I could have just improved in little areas elsewhere like you know blocking a lot more unnecessarily tagging out when I didn't need to because I had reads on Fang's uh little, little launch or whatever that usually that can hit me on um on uh raw tag or whatever I like I had reads I'm like oh he's about to do it he's about to do it he's about to do it or he would do something else or whatever and then I'd be like I didn't tag out you know and I just completely forget that I had the read in my head like he's going to do it eventually on there's no point in tagging out but re regardless I would do some stupid crap but yeah, I think I had a good beat on this match, and you're going to see some of the same stuff in the next match because it's against another Fang player, but it's up a lot more different. Alright guys, I'll see you later. Peace.